CBS News has now obtained video of the scene inside the nightclub as people hid from the gunman. Here's Jamie Yukis. <laughs> this grainy cell phone video captures the horror from inside the women's bathroom as Omar Mateen went on a shooting rampage nearby. <laughs> it was recorded while more than a dozen people squeezed into one stall. Some of them already shot, sharing a glass of water, trying to keep each other calm and quiet so they would not be heard by the gunman. Miguel Leva filmed this video. We had to be quiet because everybody whose phone was ringing and any noise he heard, he was going in that direction and just shooting people and killing them. They huddled for three hours, refusing Mateen's orders to step out. It was really hot in there, the smell of blood and, and just dead bodies everywhere. Outside the building, SWAT commander Captain Mark Canty planned a rescue. During that entire time period, officers were rescuing people. The entire time we were doing things to try to get people out. We got a lot of people out before that last breach. He's working on, he's working on, he moved his own body. Those trapped in the bathroom had no escape route, and as they desperately texted their families and police, the hostages became the SWAT team's main focus. In case I, I didn't think I was going to make it, I thought I was going to die. And I figured, you know what, somebody has to, somebody has to know what really happened. We knew he was, in, we believed he was in the bathroom. Um, we knew there were other people. We thought there might be someone in the bathroom with him. There was someone in the bathroom across the hall. But we also were, were getting information that there were people in other rooms with inside the club. Finally, Canty's team moved in, breaching a wall with a front end loader. There was a shootout. Mateen was shot dead, and those who were still alive were dragged to safety. Angel Cologne had been shot six times and was one of the last people to get out. I'm one of the ones that uh, helped you. Uh, Today he met his hero, Officer Omar Delgado. I just saw him, his size, his glasses, so I'm like, just help me, please. And when he was dragging me out, I can just look up and tell him, just hurry, please hurry, go, hurry. This public memorial has become such an important fixture for the city of Orlando that four days after the tragedy, people are still showing up. Scott, grief counselors are not just helping friends and family of the survivors and victims, but to anyone who may need help in the community. Jamie Yukis in Orlando for us. Jamie, thank you.